prepare for the extraction point. We've been briefed on all the important stories and events in the world of emerging information. Now, it's time to extract the data and turn it into action. Live from the SiliconANGLE studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, this is Extraction Point with John Furrier. Welcome to the Extraction Point. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE.com and SiliconANGLE.TV here live in Palo Alto inside the Cube with some special guests from overseas in Europe, from Finland. Guys, some entrepreneurs here visiting the U.S. from Finland uh, with a whole crew of Finnish entrepreneurs. Uh, we're here with Yanni Pentinian, right? Yes. Did I get that right? And Willie Mitian, I can't get the accent right, so just correct Pretty me. Good, yeah. Did I get that? Okay, so you're with Microtask, Willie, and you're with Premium Fan Page. So you guys have been here before. Willie, you've swung by the cube um, with Ramin, and we've been talking about Nokia and the news recently. But you guys are here on a couple different uh, fronts from Helsinki and uh, Zurich uh, in Silicon Valley for a couple things. One, entrepreneurship and fellow Finnish startups like Angry Birds are here doing some great business. But you guys are here for the GDC. Yep. So um, let's, before we get into the GDC and some of the trends, let's go through and talk about who you guys are and what your companies are. So we'll start with Yanni. Why don't you start us off? Right. Okay. So, so I was maybe one of the first game devs in Finland like 15 years ago. Uh, there was maybe... You were 12 years old? <laughs> <laughs> you like, like, you look <laughs> like, you, you know, yeah, exactly. so, nine. <laughs> so there's not many of us. There was like maybe 15 of us. And uh, we, we kind of started the whole thing. And, you know, I've been working, I, I worked on pretty much every single Finnish game developer at that time. Then later on, I moved to the U.S., worked for EA, you know, made a career yeah. out of that. Then I became an entrepreneur. I, and um, now, these days, uh, we're working on not games, but a service uh, for game developers. Um, we, we build a system where any, any game developer can have a fan page that they upload in English, and um, it can appear in any language. Like, you know, you can have a fan in Japan, and that uh, fan can read the website um, in Japanese. Uh, they have no idea that you don't speak any Japanese because it's all fluent, uh, professionally translated text. They can communicate with you. So we're basically helping game developers communicate with the world, but you know, global fan page. Uh, How old is the company? Uh, the company itself is three years old now. Um, we're sort of pivoting right now. Up until now, we've been. What does pivoting mean? <laughs> I mean, I see that on Quora. I made a comment on Shervin, my buddy, where he hates the the you know, top ten words. Hated it's like rock stars won. I said you're missing pivot. It's like the most popular word. Right. It means you know. You know, in our case, it means you kind of you kind of kind of kind of stuck. You failed. You're gonna reboot, yeah, exactly. pivot. We, we, you know. We built. Uh, Is so that so the case? Network, and then you know, Facebook came came and took over the world, and. Um, well, we're realizing the fact, so so we take whatever we do. Yeah, I mean, entrepreneurs, no big yeah. deal. You just kind of brush yourself off. You fall off the horse. Yeah. You know, you just so, dust off and do it again, right? Yeah, so back in Finland, we have a very good team. Uh, we have a solid team. We have you know, a lot of ex expertise on the multilingual translation, all that stuff. Yeah. So now we're just uh, building something new based on what we already learned. Yeah, cool. So. Cool. Well, we'll come back. I want to follow up more on that whole pivot thing and then also talk more about what's going on in Finland and Switzerland. So, uh, Willie, so you, you stopped by with Ramin, and you're, you're pretty active. You've been yep. you're in the U.S. a lot. Yep. Go back to Helsinki, and you guys uh, are doing your company. Tell us what's going on with you and your life right now. Okay, so right now uh, I'm one of the founders and the CEO of a crowdsourcing technology company called uh, Microtask. And uh, I'm uh, attending GDC, meeting a lot of the like gamification people, so people looking at using game mechanics to do other stuff. And my background is also from the gaming industry and uh, computer graphics technology industry. I was one of the founders and CTO of a company called Hybrid Graphics in the early 90s, uh, like a pioneering Finnish uh, tech company. We built a lot of gaming middleware, which we licensed to games companies here in the States and elsewhere. And then from 2001 onwards, we started looking uh, to, to take these technologies from console and PC games over to the embedded space. So basically building some of the very first middleware and uh, low-level uh, software stacks used for bringing 3D vector graphics for cell phones. License that stuff to Nokia, Samsung, Ericsson, was used in a bunch of cars, um, in various Java VMs, operating systems, and so forth. And then in 2006, we sold the company to NVIDIA. 
That's how we became a yeah. Silicon Valley And they just company. had a huge windfall with that lawsuit from Intel. You saw that. I don't know if you yep. saw that recently this past year. So. But we had absolutely nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you were before that. But, you know, and NVIDIA is known for their graphics, obviously. Yep. Um, and so your new deal now is, how's that going? Uh, with Microtask? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's going really well. We're fundraising once again. We've done two rounds. It's a VC-backed company. And uh, basically this spring we're completing our next financing round and I've been hopping between Helsinki and London and the Silicon Valley. How much did you do in your previous rounds, can you say? Uh, we've raised about $2 million so far and now we're looking at a round of about $5 million. How many employees do you guys have over there? We're 12 people. So you guys are lean and mean, looking for growth, yeah. right? Get yeah. back in the market. Oh yeah, and like setting up US sales, most likely enterprise sales on the East Coast, not necessarily over here. But I, I spend a lot of time maybe four months a year in uh, San Francisco. That's great. We're here in uh, Extraction Point, my new show, where we sit down with some of the leaders in, in the industry and emerging entrepreneurs like Yanni and Willie to talk about what the key signal is out of the noise. And uh, you guys, obviously, in the trenches as entrepreneurs uh, from Finland, which is, really has a great reputation from the, in the mobile business from going way back in the day, as you guys are proof of, you know, having deep roots technically and from a market standpoint in mobile with Nokia, obviously, and the talent in, in Finland. Um, so i got to ask you a couple things around the signal that's been going around mobile. First is, uh, before we dive into the, some of the fun stuff, um, what's the deal with Nokia? So, I mean, speak candidly, I mean, screwed up with Microsoft? There's, there's two sides of this story. We had a good round table with Ramin here and Doug Garland, who's a Silicon Valley executive, uh, two Fridays ago. So, quick comment uh, and perspective. Well, uh, so... I was disappointed when I heard that, but I don't know if they had any actual choice. You know, that they kind of, they cannot continue with Symbian, they cannot build a new system, and it seems they cannot really go with Android either. It, it, they, they were left with the best that's out there, and we just have to hope that they find a way to make it. Uh, it, it seems that like they're going to be the distant third player, but let's hope that they will find a way to... Uh, so from Ramin says, from hero to zero, or uh, some expression <laughs> like that, you know, Nokia, you know, yep. the dominant market share player, from, and still huge. I mean, they, not that tiny. Huge for years to come, but whether they can actually make money, or whether they can actually come back, at, you know, at the top of the, the game, the smartphones. How long? How long, um, Yanni, has the the development community in the as entrepreneurs? been sideways, if you will. I mean, there's been some rumblings, obviously, with Symbian. It's like, you know, since the iPhone years. out. Years. It's been years. I mean, finally, he writes that memo, I'm going to jump off the, you know, the burning oil rig, was something <laughs> like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, that must have... Outside of the company, you know, outside of Nokia, we keep trying to tell them. But, you Get know, your head out of you know what, you know? Yeah, it's just kind of, you know, we go in front of a big building, you're kind of yelling and shouting, but, you know, yeah. they don't listen. But now, obviously, things are changing. Yeah. That's a good thing. How about you? What's your feeling on that? On the vibe from the Nokia deal? Yeah, I mean, I mean there, there's a couple of things how that's uh, affecting the ICT sector and the startup industry in Finland. Uh, is the number of Nokia employees, uh, engineers, so like long careers within Nokia, lots of good pro uh, programming skills and so forth, who are now leaving the company. I mean, it's the number of CVs we are getting daily is just crazy. And it's not only Nokia, it's also in Finland, there's a lot of uh, subcontracting companies in kind of like the ecosystem around Nokia. And uh, for some of these companies, Nokia has been 90% of their business. And uh, let's say doing... Uh, there's a ton of talent out there. And they're, and they're seeing things like what you guys are doing as entrepreneurs. They're seeing the liberalization, uh, liberation, if you will, of entrepreneurship yeah. come into yeah. Finland. Like the Angry Birds, obviously the huge smashing box office success that they've been. I mean, they've they've been huge. Yeah, so people go, hey, I could do that. Yeah. And the big change now is that up until now, everybody thought in Finland, Nokia is uh, it, they cannot fall. You know, that's that's where you go and get your safe career. You know, you you do your university degree and then you get a job at Nokia and, and you you said, but that you know, that turned out to be not true. And you know, that's that's one of the prime reasons why a lot of people didn't choose to start their own companies because they thought it's too risky. It's actually more riskier to actually go into the corporation. I think a younger generation Today is, is seeing, yes. you know, I could be laid off in three years. So this is a Why not start a company example. and get Y Combinator money and come yeah. to Silicon uh, Angle? By the way, we'll, we have some money for you. We're going to give you money before you leave, just so we can say we've <laughs> seeded these entrepreneurs with some cash because we're giving away money too. We won't tell how many, how much Ooh. it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so the entrepreneurship scene's booming um, there. Um, the capital markets are trying to get with the program. 
the government, the big companies like Nokia kind of falling down a little bit, figuring out, hey, the world's changing. Um, what effect has the Angry Birds had on all this? I mean, tell me that, I mean, I haven't been there, uh, so I don't know. What is the vibe in Finland with the Angry Birds? I mean, is it like one of their own? You mentioned this is like their 50-something game. They've been around the block. This, they're not a one-trick pony. They've done some good work. But this smashing success has got to have... It's like. extremely positive, you know, it's, it's an example of, you know, we all know each other, you know, for many, many years, so, so they are just, you know, one of us. If they can do it, then anyone else can do it, so, you know, that, that yeah. really is a proof that, yeah. that we can do, we, we, can, we can get things done. And, and the great thing about, about Rovio, the makers of Angry Birds, is that they are actually helping the other companies out, you know, they are, they are not keeping it to themselves, they are uh, not trying to just isolate themselves, they yeah. actually... Uh, like they gave us a chance to, to build um, this this cool multilingual uh, fan page. They are our first customer, um, so you know they, they they're taking care of their own they, and they're yeah, being they cool gave about us it. A chance to, to, to use our technology to be, build something cool, give us a market, and now we, it's it's up to us to take advantage of that. Then and uh, you know they they're doing very cool things like that. So they they're definitely not. Um, uh, you know, it's not away from us. It's, they actually bring a lot of. Uh, you know, there's a lot of similarities um, between um, when I, I'm I'm old enough to know when Bill Gates hit the scene and was growing the, the computer industry was was at a very early stage, like the mobile gaming industry. And what Microsoft did really well with Bill Gates and Ballmer is they li literally took care of their friends. I mean, they they didn't hand any. And there's no charity, but there was there was a camaraderie in the industry where they grew, everyone grew together and they had that openness. Um, and there was, some, you know, so obviously some, if you didn't perform, you were bounced out. But for the most part, they brought in an ecosystem and everybody made money around yeah. them. And that was something that really made Microsoft uh, what they were. So I think the Angry Birds is on a good, good path there. Uh, cool. I, I think actually a lot of um, investors around the world right now are looking at Finland, uh, hoping to find the next Angry Birds. You know, they, they think that, you know, because that came from Finland, maybe there's something else there that... Uh, nobody found yet. Well, yeah, actually, zillion mobile developers. Did. Well, I mean, only this week, like Index Ventures, leading more or less the leading VC in uh, in yep. Europe, uh, they invested into Shadow Cities, which is one of the Helsinki startups for for guys and location based gaming. Is there a Helsinki kind of Silicon Valley? Is there a part of town? Is there a part that's kind of like the cluster? Yeah, n nowadays there is there is this. Uh, Alto Entrepreneurship Society and Alto Venture Garage, which is mm -hmm. a physical facility yeah. where a lot of the current generation startups are coming from. Yeah, and I, the guy who runs that is pretty, pretty solid. Yeah, yeah Remy. <laughs> yeah. He's involved in that, right? Yeah, but and and also the, the Alto... Yeah. They were here on the Cube. Yeah, and then some of the key guys are right now here in Silicon mm -hmm. Valley trying to build an air bridge like between Helsinki and the Valley. Yeah, well, cool. Well, we'll support that all the way. We're, we're excited by the work you guys are doing. Uh, we're here inside the Cube on the Extraction Point talking with uh, the entrepreneurs from Finland. Huge contingent of entrepreneurs out here this week for a variety of networking reasons and the GDC, uh, exploring opportunities, building, building relationships, hanging out with their famous buddies, the Angry Birds, uh, uh, Rovio guys. So uh, great stuff. Let's talk about uh, gaming. Gaming is hot. Gaming is not EA. It's not the big monolithic, huge capex investment Hollywood like high end graphics. Which don't get me wrong, I love the games that are on on Xbox and and uh, and, and PlayStation. But the, the the Facebook, the social platform, Zynga. You got the iPhone. You got the iPad. Created massive disruption. Um, one, take us through from your perspective as entrepreneurs who've been in been in the mobile and gaming business. Talk about what's going on in the market today. What are some of the big dynamics um, with developers and with buyers, sellers, users? What are you guys seeing as the big macro mega trends? We'll start with Willie. What do you think? I mean, um, I spent the day today at the various, uh, there is like pre-GDC summits uh, where different um, uh, like special, like it's there were summits in specialty areas, and there's the, there were a couple of key topics there where one was uh, gamification. So basically, taking game mechanics and game logic and applying that to pretty much everything else uh, in life and into other businesses and that's uh, uh, that's a huge phenomenon right now yeah like lo what you guys are doing for instance you're, you're building give, can you give an example now. give an example of, of some of the things you're mentioning um, well I, I could actually tell a bit about um, what we, we've been working on recently uh, and um, so 
you want to show the video? I'll, I'll do that in, in like 15 seconds. Okay. So, so basically, for example, at Microtask, we're building uh, a platform for distribution of work globally. So we can take very large, complex projects, subdivide those into super small one to two second uh, pieces and then send them to to the US to China to India to Farmville wherever we can reach people digitally and uh, We were contacted a while ago by the Finnish National Library and these guys basically have uh, I know I'm gonna sound a bit like Austin Powers when I say this but these guys basically have the whole Finnish cultural heritage and uh, they've been digitizing that. So basically, back in the 60s and 70s, uh, they microfilmed that stuff. And then 80s and 90s, uh, the microfilms were uh, scanned. And now they've been do using things like optical character recognition to actually turn that text into a searchable format. However, the results have not been very good, especially with the older documents. Yeah. They're in old fractured fonts. They are they're in bad scans and so forth. So um, like 30% of all the text they have is, um, is useless. So basically what we built for them is a way for feeding these. I mean, they, they started out with 4 million pages of text. So feeding that to a bunch of volunteers uh, the people who just want to help in the process of electrifying the Finnish uh, culture. And uh, uh, actually, if I can get the video uh, playing, uh, I can show Yeah, let's go to the video. Ricky, can you pull up the video on the screen here? It's okay. So, so basically, we build a website. And this is also on uh, YouTube as well. Uh, oh, yeah. So we build a website called Digital Code, and people can log in, uh, log in on the website and play a couple of different games. Uh, you should turn it on. So, okay, so let's see if it plays. So it's Just hit play. here it is. Oh, no, it's back on YouTube. So, yeah, hit the play button, Ricky. That's yeah, that. There it is. Okay, so, so anyway, uh, I hope you get it pl playing there at some point, but um, uh, so... We're having some technical difficulties with the mouse. All right, let's blow off the, uh, the video. Rick, you okay. try to keep it playing, we'll talk through okay, it. Okay, so if you can get it playing, it will be great. So, so, so basically... Uh, what does this game do? Cause so what the game does is that the, the, the challenge... The and this is a video showing the game. It's not actually interactive on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's a, a demo. It's a, yeah, you can have a video sh showing the game, and uh, you can try it out if you just log in on the digitalcode.fi website. And... Uh, uh, so basically, in, in the game, we have a, a level where there is a bunch of moles. The moles are trying to cross a river, and what you need to do is to build a bridge to let the moles, uh, moles get safely uh, across the river. And the way you build the bridge is by typing in words that you see on yep. the screen, and those words are uh, I extracts from ta taken from the old documents. And if you type the word correctly, uh, then you get a piece of a bridge. If you type it incorrectly, you make a mistake. Uh, then the bridge breaks and you go and drown the moles. And drowning moles is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And the way, the way we actually know which, whether you, you got a correct answer or not, is that there's loads of people. Okay, so here we go. So the moles are walking left to right. You're typing like crazy. That's the old Fraktur font. And as, so, so the way we figure out whether you got a correct answer or not is by giving, sending the same uh, uh, tasks to multiple people and cross comparing the results so they're essentially voting about what is the correct correct answer and uh, uh, and uh, th that, that's what we, we get so it's, a, it's, it's a type the word in or yeah. is it like a question and answer thing yeah no it's a, you type in the right they type in the right word uh, uh, and uh, uh, and on this level here so for it's an interactive game it's an interactive flash based game it's Facebook integrated. You log in with your Facebook accounts. You can play against your friends. You see how your friends are. Uh, are What's fairing. the core content on that? The core content of the game, just for like education, just or play, or both. Oh, the, I mean, from the, the words and all the different from, from the point of view of the player. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a word word from typing game, but from the point of view view of the National Library, what they get is they they get their whole. 
um, four million page archive now now indexed. It's going to take a few years at the current rate, yeah, yeah. but uh, they they wouldn't have the budget to hire the people to do that. So, what do you think about gamification education? Because that's an area that we're doing some research in at Silicon and Angle. People know I've been talking about this new concept I'm pushing out called Silicon Academy, which is kind of a, a stealth project that we're working on. It's going to be kind of a portal for um, education using games, videos. I mean, everyone that I know who's under the age of uh, 15 or 18 are on Facebook, YouTube, maybe Twitter, maybe not, but they'd much rather be interacting with some game mechanics for education well, than actually dealing with, like, old you know, school. One thing is, like, I, I have a son who's two years old and he's very um, active um, iPad so, you know, it, it's not just, you know, under 18 or something. It, it's like the kids, yeah. they, they love when they have something that uh, he's doing a lot of things that, that he wouldn't really be able to do um, without having it on, on a computer or on an iPad, you know. Otherwise, uh, certain puzzles and things like that would be too complicated because, you know, you, you mess up the pieces and they, you know, it's, it's just uh, needs too much organization skills uh, for a three-year-old. But when it's on a computer, they can just learn how to navigate the menus. They actually get very, very interested in that. He he learned the alphabets, you know, when he was uh, two years old. So, so games that people know today. Be, let's take this to a whole other level beyond play. Mm -hmm. What is next for gaming? I mean, obviously, play being obviously a Farmville. You got Halo. You these, you know, you got the games where people. It's it's fun. It's exhilarating. And then that's it. What's going on in the game business with game mechanics? That's more beyond play. Education, socialization, integration, values. What are you guys seeing as the top? trends there and products do you see anything i mean your game with the word game yeah. is nice i mean you can turn that into a fun play educational game yep it could be so it's play, taking advantage of play but not pure play you know what i'm saying yep. yeah I, I think uh, you say language learning is one thing where if you can make a game um where it's actually you, you kind of learn while you're playing it you don't think about learning the language you, you learn how, how to advance in the game then you that, that's one very good example i've seen a couple couple examples you know, learning Chinese by just, you know, playing a game, then you kind of have to figure out how to, how to draw the character, which otherwise would be, you know, a very tedious job. You know, you, you don't, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. But when it's part of the game, you don't really think about that part. You just want to win the game. And th that's really... It's a user, it's a user behavior. Wanna, yeah. It's, it's like, you know, user behavior. They pick up a book, they open it up, and they read chapter one. Uh, they go to chapter two. Yeah. This is a process that's learned. Mm -hmm. Gaming, it's the same thing. What you're saying is gaming can take the same mechanics. You play the game and you drive the mechanics, you win. So that's a user behavior. You see that porting over to other environments? Yeah, that, that, that gives you the motivation to learn. You know, that's it's a very short-term motivation. You, yeah. you don't think about learning to speak Chinese. You learn. You think about advancing this one level, and that's yeah. much more tangible on target. You know? What about socialization? You guys obviously uh, from Helsinki. Um, with the internet now, you can fly to Silicon Valley like it's New York, right? That's a little bit longer flight, but for the most part, you've done the jet, the jets, jets and jetting over here. Um, the net gives you more access. It is a flatter world we're living in. So, you know, with mobile, mm -hmm. you can do business now here without lugging a huge laptop. Yep. So what's, what's, how's the world changing on a social basis with, with this new environment? Well, um, one example is that uh, our company is, is based in Finland, and I these days reside in Switzerland. And we commute like as if we were in the same um, office. Like we, we, we com communicate just as if we were sitting next to each other. You know, we don't really need to be in the same I sometimes place. text my wife, and she's in the other room. You know, yeah, it you know my kids, you know, it's like... And, <laughs> you know, when you're building a company, if you can actually hire a person anywhere in the world, that, that's a huge advantage. Yeah. You don't need to be tied to the same... Uh, you don't need to ask people to move, for instance. Yeah. If you find somebody who's really talented, you want to hire them, well, you just ask them to join your company. You don't need to tell them you have to move, you have to take your family and move to another place. You just uh, hire them as part of your team, regardless of where they are. And uh, that is really changing. Changing. Willie, what do you think about the entrepreneurship world? And you're out raising money, you're talking to a lot of investors. What's it like from your perspective in Silicon Valley and around the world? What's your, your observation around the current entrepreneurial climate? Uh... It's fairly good, and, and, and it's especially like what we've been experiencing in Finland, there's been a huge uh, entrepreneurial boom over the last couple of years, uh, especially how... Hold on, is, it, is, is Mike there working? So we have a little mic problem here, hold on. Okay. His mic is not working? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so go ahead. We'll just go, go ahead. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll so, so the there's, there's been a huge uh, boom over the last couple of years, and the, the big thing there is, is that the entrepreneurs are self-organized. So it's, uh, it's been, uh, in a Helsinki we nowadays have, like, I, I know it's, it, it must, must sound a bit silly to you since you're, you're based out of Silicon Valley, but back to, like a few years ago we had hardly any entrepreneur events. Uh, people didn't get that much mm, together and so forth. And now you have something to go every night. So it's been a... Uh, How's the funding climate? I and mean, Ramin was talking about it's now starting to get going. Yeah, and, but it's, in Finland it's international funding. So recently we've been able to raise uh, from uh, foreign VCs, uh, like Euro European, mainly London-based, Swedish-based, uh, Tallinn-based VCs. Uh, the Finnish VC scene is fairly dead, unfortunately. Okay, so what do you guys think of uh, what's going on in, in the U.S., mainly Silicon Valley? What's your perceptions of Silicon Valley right now? It's very vibrant. <laughs> <laughs> I've said bubble, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, it's a good time for entrepreneurs, no doubt. It's, yeah. It's, you know, if you're an entrepreneur out there, Silicon Valley is smoking hot right now on the seed side of it. Yeah, um, and seeing it from a. far away, it's very inspiring. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know how it's in in here. Maybe you're feeling that you know the bubble is bursting or it's getting too no, hot. I, but I, no, but I like know, it. We we visit here. We come here for a few weeks. We get energized. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I have a lot of experience. I've been through a bunch of cycles, and I'll just say for the folks out there who are thinking about the, whether this is a bubble or not. And I saw some folks writing about it in New York, and um, it's not a, a bubble happens here all the time um, in Silicon Valley. That's where the innovation and the inspiration comes from. Entrepreneurs are, as you know, as you get entrepreneurs together, they like to mingle, and so it creates a very bubblish environment. But there really isn't a tech bubble outside of the early stage because um, in IT, there is actually a lot of real spending and real tangible value being transferred. Cloud computing, mobility is driving a lot of change. So in the traditional IT environment, we're seeing data. We're here at Cloudera, uh, which is the home of Hadoop. Um, in the large businesses, there's real spending, real change, real infrastructure building and migration so there's no real bubble there um, the bubble is definitely a tech bubble for startups I mean when you got the Angry Birds you got Apple you know the biggest tech company now you got Facebook here in, in Palo Alto I mean you can't help but go this is a crazy environment crazy good so it's definitely really fun <laughs> if you're an entrepreneur so you know um, just be careful right uh, I'm writing a post right now called Angel Dust um, which is a uh, uh, about talking about the angel financing market here um, and it's for the first time I've ever seen in my lifestyle a bloodbath between angel groups so you're seeing angel investors starting to you know kind of go to war with each other so you're seeing factions of early stage investors not working together and uh, and that's just good I think it's good competition so if you're a startup entrepreneur, there's a lot of money. I mean, you saw the Y Combinator news. They're handing out money. Yep. You know, that's like... <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I mean, they're attracting a lot of lower quality startups um, and a lot of these um, angel list stuff, a little bit lower quality from what people are talking about. But, uh, but for the most part, it's still a lot of activity, which is a generally a great trend. So, I mean, I think you, know, you guys should... I mean, you're, you're a little bit beyond the funding there, but uh, for the most part, it's good. Um, and I've heard people say, you know, they, they don't need financing. So there's a, a big school of older entrepreneurs who are my age who don't need 50000 or 100000 They fund it themselves. Because right now you can actually build a business with that yeah. money. It's, yeah. it's, it's, you don't need to have, like, a huge team anymore. It's, and it's you can get really resources cheap. outside of Silicon Valley that are yep. also hungry for this bridging and relationship building so yeah. you know I think you guys are in a good spot um, in the way you're you guys are coming over here and I think the attitude for the for all the Finnish entrepreneurs have been very solid I've been very impressed with the quality and the attitude among them you guys are really you're hungry attitude. you're smart you've got integrity there's a good culture over there so I think I see good things for the for the Finnish entrepreneurship uh, movement over there so Cool. So any final comments you guys want to part? We're going to uh, end the extraction point here. We're talking about gaming. We're talking about entrepreneurship. We're talking about Finland, the impact of entrepreneurship in Finland, impact of gaming in the world, uh, mainly Angry Birds, obviously from your neck of the woods. Huge success globally. Um, we are living in a gaming culture where gaming is not just a cult side demographic. It's now mainstream game mechanics are and game paradigms are integrating into user behavior, mainstream user interfaces, mobile. I mean it's pretty exciting. So any final comment you guys want to share with the with the audience? 
you know, if, if you're attending uh, GDC, try to somehow get your hands on uh, on a ticket to the Nordic party tomorrow. <laughs> one of the scariest events of GDC. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a special like secret handshake passcode URL? Yeah, but you will not remember anything the next day <laughs> anyway. So, Yanni, any final comments? Uh, no, I just you know want to want to encourage people to you know really look at the gaming as you know you don't need to have a lot of resources to build something very cool and there's a lot of r room for innovation now with uh, all these new devices coming out you know it's really exciting world and I'm very happy to be part of that. And your your company is the premiumfanpage.com. Yep. Um, check it out. That's for me. Who are you trying to reach with that? Uh, um, well, anyone making website games. Owners? So, so it's um, well, not not website owners game. necessarily. Uh, if if you build an iPhone game, for instance, then then what you really need is marketing because the, the marketing channels within the phone are very limited. So you need to build a social media campaign, and for that you need to reach people around the world. Um, so you know we help you uh, build. The social media streams you, you do it in English and we'll just get it out there in you know Korean Japanese uh, Portuguese whatever so you get the whole world covered with the same effort that you usually use just you know for, for English. So social media marketing opportunity with you guys exactly for big corporations in the US to go international uh, not not big I mean we, or we anyone yeah small ones actually because there's the big, big and small you're not, the, you're not well, the big ones the biggest ones actually they can afford to hire their own you know teams and you yeah. know marketing and whatever are uh, the small companies uh, up until now, they didn't really have any chance for that because it required too much resources. So we are taking care of that, and it's very cost-effective because it's crowdsourced. Uh, still, we take care of the quality. Um, so yeah, it's very, very good alternative for any size company. Great. And um, Willie, your company, Microtask. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the main product and audience you're trying to reach. Yeah. So so the Microtask uh, core product is the is the Microtask platform, which is a distributed work platform, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for taking large complex work processes, sub subdividing those into small micro tasks, and then tapping into a global labor pool. So you're able to source them where wherever is the least, uh, least expensive. We've been focusing recently mostly on text recognition. So things like uh, uh, processing of forms, um, like digitization of forms, digitization of archives, and uh, we're advancing to areas such as business card scanning, uh, invoice. So who's your primary customer that you want to reach that wants to give you money? Uh, I mean, r right now it's been uh, national libraries. Those guys have massive, massive archives. Uh, so digitization. Digitization. Digitization, yep. anyone who's interested in preserving and or yep. moving stuff uh, on digital. Uh, th then other, other big areas are, for example,